Oh, hey there. Um, I'm a little messy because I just went, oh, this is shaking. A little messy because I just went for a run um, and I haven't showered yet. Because I came home and I was on my run and it was like five minutes to noon and then I realized that this, this assignment that I, come on buddy, this assignment that I stayed up all night working on, or not all night, I stayed up late-ish working on, um, that was due by noon today. Like, I finished it, but I just never turned it in. This is a blanket. But, um, so, <coughs> so I, like, I was on my run, and then I started running really fast to get home to turn this assignment in. Hi, buddy. Um, so, I got back from Toronto on Monday. It's Wednesday now. Um, or no, I got back from Toronto, like, late Sunday night. But, um, so I had a really great time there. Um, I'm not going to talk about librarian stuff. Well, not really. Um, one thing I did while I was there was, um, well, a couple things. First of all, um, prior to going there, I, I kind of had it in my mind that I was interested in finding, um, a librarian job there when I graduate and moving there and um, <clears throat> was really just like um, knew I wasn't really gonna make it here in Detroit because it's just not there's not enough queer stuff going on and I just sometimes I don't know feel isolated and weird <clears throat> but it was really like more focused on being excited about the places I could go and while I was there um I hadn't been to Toronto since I was 15 and had this crazy awesome like very fun and liberating experience of being like on my own in a big city for the first time like literally on my own because my my best friend and I were like on the subway and got separated from our swim team like they all got off and we the doors closed and we didn't and somehow like we just sort of wandered around on our own and somehow that was okay somehow we didn't even have cell phones but somehow we got in touch with them and they just went the t team went and did what they were doing and we just kind of did our own thing and <coughs> so it was like my first experience being like on my own in a big city or anything like that but um I hadn't been since then so it wasn't like um I don't know I it was just somewhere that was exciting that was near here. And I was thinking about there. I was thinking about Chicago. But I wasn't really thinking about Chicago. Um, I've always wanted to be Canadian. But so... Ever since I've gotten back, like, while I was there, I just felt so hopeful. And it made me, like, really notice a lot of things about being in Detroit that I hadn't really noticed. Like, the fact that if I'm in public... I don't talk about being queer, and if I'm going to say anything related to being queer, I kind of like look around, and I lower my voice, and like make my body small and become unassuming, and if there's like a lot of people around, I just won't talk about it. And that's not how I was before. That's not just, it's not just how I naturally am. It's, it's definitely not how I was in Portland. And I feel like I'm, like, I was in Toronto and that was really not the case. Like, it was okay to talk about being queer and talk about outrageous stuff as loud as possible and feel safe. And, um, I... I don't know, that just made me feel like, yeah, there's like a part of me that's dying here. Um, it wasn't just that, like, I just feel, I went to a party, it was crazy, like, a party where it wasn't centered around alcohol. People were talking to each other and having conversations, and I mean, not that that doesn't happen here ever, like, conversations happen, but there's always alcohol, and I don't drink. Um, I did drink in Toronto, and it didn't feel, I don't know, I feel like not drinking, I'm really thankful that I don't drink, and I'm really thankful that I don't drink in Detroit, and it, it feels weird to talk about, because they, I, I do love Detroit, um, but I feel like Detroit is killing my spirit, I feel like, 
I don't know. So while hi buddy, come here. Um, while I was at the conference, I met with this job coach, and um, we talked. I don't know. It was like a really enlightening and awesome experience. And she had this whole attitude that was like, "You have the answers inside of you, and I'm just here to help you unlock them or something." It was. But she helped me unlock them, and I'm, I don't know, like, I came back here, so she suggested that I do a practicum there, and, um, the second that she said it, it was like planting a seed, and it just is, I feel so focused on it, like, it's just, I don't know, and... So I, um, I don't know, I got back here and like Monday morning I was like sitting in bed doing homework because I had a lot of homework to do that was like due online by like noon or something so I didn't even get up. I was just sitting in bed doing homework and I was just sitting there doing everything I could to will myself to not, like, fall into depression for, like, being back here. And I feel like Monday I, like, willed myself to not get depressed. And part of that was that I went for a run. And going for a run is my new thing. Um, I go for a run every day. But, um, oh. But, um, I know, I love you, but, um, it's something that it's like, I, I hate running. It's so, I don't know, but Blanket loves it, but, um, it's just something that forces me to pull myself out of whatever I'm in and, like, do something that's going to make me feel good. And that's what I need to be doing right now. And I feel like I've gone from being excited about going somewhere else to being, like, drawn and, like, determined, like, driven by needing to get the hell out. And I feel guilty about that because I do love Detroit. I think I said that already. Like, and I love my friends here. It's just... So, a lot of places that I've been, people are hipsters. And they're annoying, and hipsters are annoying, and they're kind of just, like, vapid and shallow and don't want to get real and don't really care about anything more than trying to be cool. But... Normally, if you call someone a hipster, they'll be really offended and they'll be like, I'm not a hipster. Even if they're totally a hipster, they at least know that they don't want to be labeled as a hipster. They at least know. Here, people call themselves hipsters. People feel flattered if you call them a hipster. People have called... I don't know. I feel like I'm in danger of becoming a hipster if I stay here. Because I don't I don't think it's possible to be like a young-ish kind of hip but not hipster. Hip white person in Detroit and not be a hipster. I think that that's um what happens. And I don't want to become a hipster. I don't... Yeah. And, um... I don't know. I just, I feel like if I stay here long term, my spirit is going to die. And my spirit dying is going to look like me just being just another hipster. And I can't do that. So, 
I don't know. So I, I'm now I'm feeling like really driven, really, really driven. Like I have to be. Like I'm, my spirit's gonna die if I don't do it. Like everything's depending on it. That I'm just getting out. I, yeah, and gosh, some people are probably going to feel offended by this, like Detroit people, and it's, I don't really know what to say about that, like, I, I love the people that I've connected with in Detroit, um, and I take, like, two steps beyond that, and I can't stand it, like, there's really, really beautiful things going on here. Um, I think it's a good place to be if you're an artist and you want to devote yourself to your art. <coughs> but it's, I just can't do it. And I feel really great about that. I feel, I feel really great about that. Um, I feel like I work really well when I have like a goal that I'm working towards. And I think that like, I'm really excited to get the hell out of here. And like, I have no idea what my life will be like when, when I move to Toronto, which will hopefully be this fall. But I also know, I know, I got glimpses of things that my life could be, of things that other people's lives are. And that's where I want to be. Maybe it's totally random. Maybe it's a random city that I chose. It's not that random because it's close. Portland wasn't close. I couldn't see my family. And that was the thing about... I, I have family there, which I love. But, like, I couldn't see my family. And that was the thing that was hardest for me. Like, I told my mom that I'm thinking about moving Toronto to Toronto or more than just thinking about it. And she was excited. She was like, ex she was like, it's not that far away. It's a couple hours on the train. I could come visit you. I would have an excuse to go there. My family would visit me there. Like, I don't know. So that, that's all I'm going to say because it's getting long. Um, oh, one more thing been listening to the same song on fucking I just swear am I not supposed to swear I've been listening to the same song on repeat over and over again I'm still listening to it right now so whatever deal with it here's blanket blanket bye, bye.